I'll tell a unique story about this. I was, I was, I got up that morning and I got a call from a friend of mine, who, a childhood friend of mine, I went to go on to high school with, who is a physician who lives half time L.A., half time in um, uh, in Paris, and he said, I've opened my ancestral home, and I'm having a big party, and I would love for you to come to the party. And I thought to myself, I know that house. It's in the deep ghetto. I don't think I want to go because I didn't know what was in there now after Katrina. I knew that this was a bad neighborhood where people get shot and carried out every night. So I, I kept thinking to myself, if I don't go, he's going to be a little angry with me and I need to go. So I finally decided to go. Well, the house was on First Street uptown. That's the ghetto. And I turned off of a major avenue onto the street. And within a block, I ran into a tribe of these Indians. And I, w I jumped out of my car, I grabbed my camera, and I started taking pictures like I was going crazy. I got back in the car, and I drove another block, and there was another tribe. And then uh, two more blocks, there was another tribe. And then by, when I finally got to my destination, I was there for 20 minutes, and my wife decided to walk in the neighborhood a little bit, and she ran into uh, like 20 or 30 more. So I got now five or 600 pictures of Mardi Gras Indians. And if you're from New Orleans, if you see one, if you see five Mardi Gras Indians on a Mardi Gras day, am I right? You've seen a lot. You don't usually see them because these these costumes, these they don't call them costumes, they call them suits. These suits, they have made themselves. And in order to feel like they're authentic, they think that they have to bleed on the thread. So that every little intricate bead is sewn in. And literally it takes them a year. How many of you have seen Treme? The, 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 the TV show Treme. There's a Mardi Gras Indian in Treme, and he's sewing that costume one bead at a time because it takes them a year. When I was a child, they wore those costumes two times and they destroyed it because you never come out in the same costume two years in a row. And you built another one because what you were trying to do is show your artistry to your neighborhood. The crown, in, the, in this guy's case, that, that white crown, um, he took it off and I felt it because he, when he, after he had walked for 20 minutes from his house, they got to walk. The things are so big you can't put them in anything and tra travel with them. So they come out of their homes about 9 in the morning. By 9.20 they wore, wore out because this thing weighs a couple of hundred pounds. And the crown was 60 to 65 pounds. And he took it off and he put on the little crown so that he could finish the rest of his walk. They call it the walk. <laughs> okay? Because it is walking in their neighborhood. They never hit the avenue. Nobody sees them out of their community. And they show their artistry to their people. It's for one another. And when I was a child, again, the tribes fought one another. I mean, literally fought one another with guns and knives. Now they compete for how pretty you are. They, these are called mostly guys, and the most, ex most extreme compliment you can give them is, man, you sure look pretty. <laughs> Whenever you say, man, you sure look pretty, they know that they got their stuff together. Well, I photographed, I don't know how many of them. I took 200 pictures on Tuesday. 